Welcome. In this video I'll discuss helicon waves and these are a kind of whistler waves or another name for whistler waves and they're usually used uh, when, they're, when they're confined in a laboratory plasma so in a, an enclosed conductor. Um, whistler waves are often called helicon waves. One of the main uh, applications of them is for plasma heating or for plasma sources and so these are used to produce high density high power um, plasma sources. Um, because they don't involve any kind of electrodes, you can power them from, from external, from outside the, uh, the, the vacuum vessel. And so you can put a lot of power into the plasma without eroding electrodes or, or contaminating the plasma with impurities. Um, and so first we're going to look at just the structure of, of Whistler waves. And first we're going to look at the R waves, which are the, the right-handed waves which resonate with the electrons. So it's the electron branch. And this is the uh, the branch which propagates in, in vacuum. Um, if you look at the, the other branch, the L branch, um, you'll find that the, the electric fields and magnetic fields are, are in the opposite direction than they need to be for propagating in vacuum. Um, and so the L branch doesn't propagate in a, in a vacuum, um, but the R branch does. Uh, when they're confined in a, a conductor, um, then both L and R can, can propagate. And so both are used in, in laboratory plasmas, but, uh, but mainly the, the R branch, because it propagates in, in vacuum. Uh, okay, so the, the structure of this, so we looked at previously, so these, are, these are parallel waves, so the, the perpendicular refractive index N is, is zero, um, and the N perpendicular, um, let's go and get it right here. Uh, so this is roughly, so we have one minus here, we have the electron plasma frequency, and we have the the wave frequency omega, uh, the electron cyclotron frequency, which here is negative, and omega plus omega, the ion cyclotron uh, frequency here, omega i, which is positive. Um, I'll just write down a few of these here. So pi e says the electron uh, cyclotron frequency, so it's n e squared over epsilon naught, and then the m e, the electron mass. Um, and these n's are here, n is just c times k over omega. So n parallel is the parallel k component. So here n, n parallel is just c times the k parallel over omega, where k parallel is the wave, wave number along the magnetic field. Because these are, these are parallel waves. Uh, we looked at them in, a, in the previous video. Um, we can write down what the dispersion relation looks like. Uh, and if you remember, from previously you had this, this matrix relation um, which gives the electric fields and so we have that we have this expression here I'll just write out. So this is a, a simplified form um, of the equation we derived last lecture for the electric fields um, and this is only if uh, this is only if n perpendicular is equal to zero. So if if n perpendicular is is not zero then there are extra terms in here that, that have to be taken into, into account. Um, and here the S is the, the sum, and D is the difference of these R and L factors. So S is R plus L, and then D is R minus L, the sum and, and the difference. And this was derived for form where the, the B field um, is, in, is in the Z direction, so EZ is a long magnetic field. And so here this is the, this is the component along field. On B. Okay, whereas the X and the, the Y direction are perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay, so we can look at this matrix um, and multiply parts of it out. So first of all, this, this lowest row just has P times EZ equals zero. So P times EZ. Now P is just represents the, uh, the plasma oscillation um, and P is not equal to zero here. Um, because if when p is equal to zero, this gives us the the plasma oscillation, um, and so here p is not zero, um, and therefore e z must be equal to zero. So for these right-handed whistler waves, there's no electric field along the along the field. Um, then we can write down what the e x and e y components are, and you can see they're going to be going to be very very similar. Uh, they both have this factor of s minus n squared, and they both have these factors of i d. With just a minus sign on the on the y component, so we can take either of these two rows. Um, we end up with the same same answer. So let's just take this this first one. 
So we have s minus n squared times ex minus id times ey is equal to zero. So we can write this out here. So then just dividing through by, by ex and divided by d. So we just have the i e y over e x is just equal to uh, s minus n squared over, over d. And now for a, a whistle wave, uh, the dispersion relation was that, that we have s minus n squared all squared um, minus d squared equals zero. And so s minus n squared s minus n squared is is plus or minus d and so this is either plus or minus one for the for a whistle wave and so for a whistle wave um, this i e x i e y over e x is plus or minus one and what this means is that e y and e x are, are 90 degrees out of phase. So if you look along the long magnetic field, for example, this is, this is B, which is in the Z direction, um, and you plot what the the X and the Y components of electric field look like. So they look kind of, so this is like E, X, oh, this is E, so this is E, X. Um, e y is ninety degrees out of phase, and so it looks kind of like like this. So this would be e y. So they're, they're both oscillating, um, but they're out of ninety degrees out of phase. And so what this looks like if we try and draw uh, draw a field line. So if this is b, um, we have. An electric field, which let's say starts in, we can call this the y direction, so it's like the x direction. Um, as the wave is propagating, the the direction of the electric field is changing, and so it's rotating. And so the the magnitude of the electric field is rotating. In this case, in the the right hand direction. So if we if you look down the magnetic field, if you have B fields going away from you. Um, the electric field starts out like this and then is rotating. So it's rotating onto here. And so as as the wave propagates, it's rotating in the right hand right hand direction. This is this what's this metro represent here. So it's twisting, so it's pointing right and then down and then left. Um, and the whole wave, the electric field vector is rotating in, in the right hand right hand sense. So there are several ways that these can be can be driven. So uh, helicon using helicon antennas. Um, so these uh, essentially use the fact that these are, are rotating, right and left circularly polarized, either by, by having the, the antenna itself um, twisted. Um, so you might have a, an antenna which looks a bit like, like this. So you have, uh, let's see, so you have like a circular plasma cross section like this. So we have a plasma basically sitting in the middle here. This is kind of a plasma in here. Um, and then we have the, the coils around the outside. And so this is kind of driven. So we have a, a twisted kind of pair of antennas uh, where the current goes in, so down this wire. Um, it's got a twisted wire on this side. It then runs both sides up, up here. And then down the other side of the plasma, again, like a, a twisted path like this. And then on this side, we have a current going up like this, and then out. This is the, the current path. And then this is oscillating. So this is a, a half wavelength antenna. So this, this is like the, the wavelength of, of the path of the wave over two. Um, and we're here, K. So the wave number here is just two pi over L. Uh, the magnetic field is, is basically through the middle here. So if I draw a magnetic field, it's through the middle of the, of the plasma. So B is through there. Um, there's a half wave uh, antenna, which is twisted uh, to match, match the shape of the, of the, the, of the wave um, with a half wavelength. And then the, the frequency is tuned so that this 
this K, it matches this K in here with the expected electron density, uh, electron cyclotron frequency, and so you can get from the, the B field strength and the, the plasma wave frequency. So I'll say that then depends on the on the density, so this needs to be tuned to match the, the plasma density. Um, and this can then resonate and, and uh, induce whistle waves in the plasma, which then are absorbed at the electron uh, cyclotron frequency. Um, there's another way of, of generating these waves, um, which can use just straight um, straight wires. And the idea is that you have essentially two pairs of wires, or, or it could be multiple pairs. Um, so this might have say one set of, of wires like this. Again, you're driving driving current around in a, in a circuit like this. And then you have a second pair of wires, which I'll draw in a different color this time. Uh, so you have a second pair of wires at right angles to it. So this is this is kind of around the around the back of the of the plasma. And this comes across here. And so this is in at right angles to the, the original plane. So these are these are going in, in a, a wide so that they're 90 degrees out of phase. And so if you plot the currents over time, this is the, the current um, over time. What we do is we run the currents through one set of coils as a, a sinusoid, and then the other set of coils at 90 degrees out of out of phase. And so now the, the currents in the in the coils, so as these as these currents are changing, they're inducing an electric field. And because these are 90 degrees out of phase, the the electric field rotates at the frequency at this frequency here. And so by tuning this frequency you can change the rotation and the, the direction of the of the rotation. And so you can induce uh, whistle waves by by using rotation this way. Um, you can also combine these two, so you can have um, a second pair of, of these coils at right angles um, and drive them out of phase as well. So there, there are sources which use combinations of, of these two effects um, to produce a rotating electric field um, and then drive whistle waves.